Welcome recruits to the Crescent Hawks. I'm Vince Sly, your corporate training and compliance coordinator. We're glad that you've chosen to join us and that you've passed your corporate mandated background checks. Everyone remember that employment with CH is contingent on maintaining valid licensing and avoiding activities that might negatively impact the company or its reputation, such as friendly fire, orbital bombardments, or invite... Corbin, no. There's no way somebody did that. They did? <sighs> this Hollywood briefing is to familiarize you all with the units that we may encounter in the field, work alongside, and other industry best practices. Major Stone's motto is, we're here to make money, not friends. Tactical also suggests that the more you know about these units' capabilities will help to increase the survival rate of field personnel. Less loss means higher bonus payouts for everyone. Today we're going to examine the history, structure, and accolades of the Kelhounds. So, here we go. The Kelhounds are one of the most celebrated and feared mercenary units in the inner sphere and beyond, hands down. They were founded by two brothers, Morgan and Patrick Kell. Arthur Levon, Morgan and Patrick's cousin and future husband of the Lyran Archon Katrina Steiner, dubbed them the Kelhounds as he watched the young boys terrorize a flock of sheep. As the boys grew up, the name stuck and Duke Levon eventually drew up a Kelhound's crest for them, joking that they would become great mech warriors. Arthur had complete faith in the brothers. When he passed away, he left the brothers a small fortune, and in 3010, they traveled to Galatea to launch their own mercenary company. See, Corbin, big pile of money. We have to take that trip to Solaris. Place some bets, man. Okay, here we are. After building the unit right here on Galatea, the Kelhounds took their first assignment in 3011 and were sent to Thargat, the capital of the Lyran Commonwealth. There, they joined Cranston Snord of Snord's Irregulars, who we'll cover in another holobid, and invaded the planet Castor to attack and defeat the 13th Merrick Militia. With their first major win under their belts, the Kelhounds accepted a long-term contract with the Federated Sons, which almost brought them crashing down. During this time, the Draconis Combine was mounting an offensive against the Davians. In 3013, Prince Ian Davian worked to personally defend Mallory's world from a Curitan invasion, commanding his 4th Davian guards against the Curitan Second Sword of Light. Unwilling to shift his fed son's forces over from nearby systems, Prince Davion assigned the Kelhounds to defend Mallory's world. It took ten days for the Kelhounds to arrive, and in that time, things went from bad to worse. Trapped in a labyrinth of desert plateaus, Prince Davion was killed at the hands of one Yorinaga Sarita and his warhammer. I may only drive a desk for the company, but it sure is a special kind of relief when the nobles that start the wars are the ones to fight them. Recruiting new staff? Handling insurance paperwork? It's hell. War is hell. The Curitans moved to capture the prince's body as a trophy, and the Kelhounds fell upon them and put them on their heels. The second sword of light withdrew while the fourth Davian guards retrieved the prince's body, and the Kelhounds chased the Curitans. The rest of this conflict lasted for a year, as Yorinaga's forces dug in for a prolonged game of cat and mouse. In 3016, while Morgan Kell visited his brother in the town of Cactus Flats, the Second Sword of Light saw an opportunity to destroy the Kelhounds in one massive attack. Most mech warriors have heard the legend of the Phantom Mech. Well, this is it. Outnumbered, Morgan Kell marched his archer out of the fortified city weapon pods closed. In a wide beam broadcast and speaking in Japanese, he recounted his lineage and the brave deeds of his ancestors. Then, in true samurai tradition, Morgan challenged Yorinaga Kurita to single combat to determine the outcome of the battle. That way, he could save the lives of his brother and those in his command. The two veteran mech warriors fought bitterly, picking away at each other. Morgan Kell danced in his mech, stinging the Warhammer with his medium lasers. Yorinaga's heavier weapons devastated Morgan's archer, but failed to disable it. Finally, Yorinaga feigned the loss of his PPC to lure Kell into close range. As the archer charged, the Curitan unleashed a blast that blew the right arm off Morgan's mech. 
The archer fell to its knees, and Yorinaga brought every weapon he had to bear on his opponent. But every single shot missed. Morgan Kell fired back, bringing his mech back to its feet. Kurinaga fired again, but again the salvo missed his enemy. Morgan Kell closed his battered archer's missile pods and forced his one-armed mech into an honorable bow to his foe. This simple gesture brought great shame to Yorinaga Kurita, who ordered his troops to withdraw. He and his forces left Mallory's world, and Yorinaga was stripped of his command and exiled to a monastery on Echo 5. Colonel Prince has a note here. Morgan Kell knew his enemy, their culture, and not just what they could do in battle, but what their leadership expected of their officers, and he used that knowledge as a weapon that neutralized a numerically superior force. This is why these briefings and your familiarization handbooks are so important. Morgan disbanded more than two-thirds of the Kellhounds, reducing them from regiment strength to a single reinforced battalion, which left Patrick in control of a unit that was a shadow of its former self. Morgan then resigned his commission and absconded to a monastery on Zanaya. There are some speculations surrounding his reasoning, but none of our records shed any light on the matter. Patrick slowly rebuilt the Kellhounds over the next decade, the unit served many employers over those years, from the Free World's League to the Federated Sons, but in 3027, they found themselves in the service of the Lyran Commonwealth, garrisoning Pacifica. When the planet was attacked by a covert Draconis Combine task force sent to destroy the Kelhounds, Patrick took the hounds and ran, escaping into Combine space where they learned of the kidnapping of Archon-to-be Melissa Steiner. Patrick brought the Kellhounds to Melissa's rescue on sticks, but found themselves battling elite Combine troops. Too late, Patrick realized their foes were led by Yorinaga Kurita, returned from exile to command this new unit. In the ensuing battle, Patrick gave his life battling Yorinaga and saving Melissa Steiner's life. The death of his brother and the return of his greatest foe brought Morgan Kell out of exile at the beginning of the Fourth Succession War. During this conflict, Morgan called back to duty the former Kellhounds he had dismissed a decade prior. Their mission? Destroy Yorinaga Kirita. After a series of inconclusive skirmishes, the two mech warriors finally met on the field of battle, this time on Usaka. Kirita in his Warhammer, and Morgan Kell in his Archer faced off just as they had 13 years ago. This battle went much the same way as the first, when Yorinaga fired what should have been a killing blow at Morgan's Archer, every shot missed. When his Warhammer overheated and shut down, Yorinaga conceded the fight and committed seppuku. Tactical advice? Don't let this be you. When emotions run hot, so does your mech. Don't get so heated that you forget your trigger discipline. Afterwards, many of Yorinaga's warriors defected from the Draconis Combine and joined the Kelhounds. The Kelhounds soldiered on over the years and was one of the first mercenary units to face the clans during their initial invasion. During that campaign, the Kelhounds claimed the world of Ark Royal, operating it as a site for mercenaries to get work for many years. With the clans held at bay thanks to the truce of the Battle of Tukiyid, Morgan Kell continued commanding the Kellhounds for many years, even as Ark Royal was targeted for destruction by the word of Blake during their war against the Inner Sphere. Morgan survived this conflict as well and passed away in his sleep in 3083 at 97 years old. Command of the Kellhounds passed through the Kell family, all keeping the unit in good standing and rebuilding its strength. The Kellhounds eventually passed to Morgan's grandson, Eben Kell, who worked to prevent the expansion of Clan Jade Falcon in 3142 and was leading the Kellhounds when they found themselves once again on the verge of destruction. As Clan Jade Falcon Khan Malvina Hazen expanded her territory, she set her sights on the Liran planet of Timkovici, defended by the Kellhounds. Hazen found herself frustrated by the tenacious mercenaries who helped stymie her planned conquest for the Lyran Commonwealth. The Kellhounds battled her to a stalemate, forcing her to bombard the planet from orbit, virtually annihilating the mercenary unit as well as her own allies. Command then transferred to Evan Kell's niece, Kalandra. 
For the next four years, Calandra rebuilt the Kell House, but Jade Falcons are known to hold grudges. In 3146, Hazen decided to smash the Kell Hound's homeworld of Ark Royal, brutally conquering it. That's when Calandra followed in Morgan's footsteps and disbanded the Kell Hounds to allow the Jade Falcons to lose their scent, if nothing else. Many former Kell Hounds units transformed into new mercenary units like the Ghost Dogs and the Filibuster Brigade. Some simply went to ground, waiting for Calandra's call. In 3147, she plotted the restoration of the storied unit and began assembling the first wave again. 23 February 3151 was the first confirmed sighting of a Kell Hounds unit since the raising of Ark Royal. Calandra landed on Timkovici to pay respects to the site of her uncle's death and swore vengeance against the Jade Falcons. Returning to her staging base of Beta Regulus, Calandra planned the next stage of the Kelhound's attack. Her goal? The liberation of Ark Royal. After a long campaign, she cornered the last of the Salama Falcons in the industrial city of Old Kanaw. Then she took a captured dropship and crashed it into the city. Oh, tactical reminds all officers, the correct response to surviving orbital bombardment is not to orbitally bombard them right back, and any loss of company dropships will be deducted from pay or survival benefit payouts per Section F of your employment contract. With the Jade Falcon force shattered, Ark Royal was once again under Kelhound's control. Calandra announced that the planet would be a beacon for the lost and the hopeless, and declared herself the leader of not just the Kelhounds, but the Ark Royal Liberty Coalition. And as for the future of the Kelhounds, with a leader like Calandra, anything is possible. Well, that's a wrap for today's brief, Hawks. Remember that next week is bidding week if anyone is looking to change up their Lance assignments. <laughs>